Hello, happy Wednesday, and welcome to week eight of the series that we're in based upon a sermon series that we completed here at First Assembly uh, called Spiritual Things in Church, focusing primarily on 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And today I'd like to talk about uh, the difference between a particular and a general command in Scripture because we find both of these um, in this this whole study, and specifically, as we'll look today in chapter 14, <clears throat> pardon me, of 1 Corinthians. Some verses stand alone without the need for context, and some don't. Uh, let's be honest, you can twist Scripture to make it say almost anything you desire, and that's why those on, for example, social media who seek to discredit the church or even one particular faction of the church often try to use the word of God as ammo against people who they don't like because they know the people they don't like value and trust the word of God. Can I encourage you today? Don't fall for it. It's contrived. It's disingenuous and it does not require your response. As a matter of fact, you're better off not to respond. Well, 1 Corinthians 14 Paul gives some particular instruction and some general instruction about what orderly worship should look like. Uh, having been around church ministry for 40 years, I can tell you that some church some churchgoers are more concerned about the order of worship than order in worship. Uh, you find out who those people are when you try to change something about the way they do church. Uh, there's more fights over that than over doctrine. I believe that is because there are some that are more aware of traditions than they are the Word of God. That's another, <clears throat> that's another episode for another day. Back to 1 Corinthians 14. The church in Corinth was caught up in tongues to the point that uh, other valuable gifts and the people whom God wished to use in them were minimized. Uh, Paul tells them that, look, in a public meeting, prophecy holds more value than uninterpreted tongues because a prophecy in a known language benefits everybody, while a message in tongues that is not followed by interpretation only uh, benefits the speaker. So in his summation about orderly worship, Paul begins in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26, by saying this, What then, brothers? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. This was a general instruction about a general framework for order in a corporate worship service. It was by no means to be a scripted order of worship. Uh, what follows in verse 27 is this. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. Now, this is a particular instruction for the church in Corinth, because apparently what was happening there was that their public worship had become all tongues all the time, uh, with the majority remaining uninterpreted. See, when Paul wrote this letter, it was in response to a letter that was written to him. We don't have that letter. Wouldn't it be cool if we did? But we do have this letter. And so when we when we understand the context that this letter was written in response to something, we know that verse 27 in this case was instruction, a particular instruction for that particular congregation. Although I, I will say it's not bad uh, advice for orderly worship in other congregations even today. Paul's attitude, I believe, can be summed up in verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 14, where he shares his balanced approach uh, when it comes to tongues. Uh, he says, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit. That means praying in tongues. But I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. The bottom line is this. A road has ditches on both sides. God doesn't want us to fall into either one.